Listen, listen. I can't dribble, but you don't want to see me on this court, baby. Listen, done hit the camera, done messed stuff up. Lord knows I don't need to be on nobody's basketball court. But today, I'm sitting down with the founder and director of Impact Youth Foundation. And we're talking about how we're inspiring, mentoring, and transforming thousands of lives right here in Ghana. What's up everybody, it's your man Tim Swain. Listen, I told you in the intro, you saw that crazy thing that just happened, but I'm excited to sit down with the founder and the director of Impact Youth Foundation, making a lot of great moves here in Ghana. So Mr. Isaac, thank you so much for being with me today. I appreciate it. Great, Tim, thanks. It's, it's great to be here. I'm excited to be here. So I, I actually, I don't remember how I heard about your story, but, but I, I, I went to the website I started checking out things and I said, listen, I have to sit down with this guy because he's doing a lot of great work in Ghana. So let's back up then. Tell us a little bit more about who you are, where you're from, and maybe just how you got um, interested in this particular organization. Okay, so uh, my name is Isaac Robert Papon. Um, I'm actually from the mountains. I'm from, I'm from Akropon. Uh, uh, that's, that's why I went to school. Oh, really? Akrofi Cristala Institute of Theology. Nice one. So, uh, wow. so in, in Chi, we'll say Ophi. That means that you're you are around, you've okay, been around okay, where okay. we are wow, from. Wow, wow. So, um, so I'm from the mountains, but um, I grew up um, on the mountains and also in Accra. Um, my dad was um, someone who was very passionate about sports, mm. but he was a contractor and also an administrator. Um, so I think that's where I picked the genes you know, wow. for sports from. Um, growing up, I grew up uh, from a family, very large family. I have um, eight brothers. Eight uh, brothers? Yes, exactly. Hey. <laughs> Uh, and, one, uh, and I have one sister, wow. so uh, yeah. So uh, it's, it's a, we have a very large family. We we all love sports. Wow. Uh, I started with soccer. I'm very passionate. I was very passionate about soccer. Actually, one of my first dreams and goals was to be Ghana's um, number one goalkeeper one day. Wow. You know, I wow. admired Ali Jara, you yeah. know, who was one of Ghana's top goalkeepers. So that's that's how that's where you know, in terms of uh, my interest for sports, that's where it's from. Background from my, my dad. My dad was actually worked with Hearts of Folk. Was once. Uh, a manager and administrator of Hassel Folk back in the days. Wow. So um, that's actually where the passion kind of came up from. But for me, getting to basketball, um, I picked up basketball when I was in middle school, learned it from a friend who had come from the US. Okay. And uh, definitely seeing all the skills he was doing in school. Wow. And one, all the girls kind of off was like, oh, oh. Really? I was like, okay, man, I gotta <laughs> learn the sport. You know, I get it could be a great asset for me. So, yeah, absolutely. So that was how I just learned the sport. And then um, I enjoyed it, started to follow it. Uh, watching the NBA on GTV, wow. Ghana Television, uh, but um, the real change came um, with my my brother. You know, I had a brother who, uh, my my brother who went to uh, Lincoln Community School here, which is one of the best uh, American international schools here, and uh, they play sports. Like actually, see him transform his basketball skill wow. from nothing to up there. You know, really? yeah, exactly. And he got the chance to. He actually went to the U.S. to further from college, but. He had the opportunity to play college basketball, you know, but um, he wasn't, his mindset, he wasn't really prepared for it. And so it kind of caught him off guard. And I was like, man, what if he really knew this opportunity ahead of time and really prepared mm. himself for it? And um, that really got me to say, listen, we have a lot of young people who are passionate about basketball in Ghana. Uh, why don't we use it as a transformational tool rather than a transactional tool where many of them, instead of them becoming victims of the sport, they become victors of the sport, you know, and um, so wait, wait, hold on. You, 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 that, that, that's a that's a uh, interesting phrase that you yeah. use. You said instead of becoming victims of the sport, victors of the sport. I mean, what does that mean exactly? Okay, what what, what that means is that um, many young people are passionate about sport, but at the end of the day, many of them just um, 
don't are not able to realize the opportunities and make anything out of the sport. But the sport rather takes a lot out of them. So they spend a lot of hours practicing. Mm. They spend a lot of hours playing, you know. And even coaches, even many of many coaches use them in terms of to win games. Mm. But at the end of the day, when they are done, there's nothing for them to really look back and say, I got I really this really helped me to build my career or to to earn an income, you know. Or apart from the car there's a lot of character development stuff from sport that it, it enhances it. But in terms of making a living, you have very few yeah. people who are able to make a living through sports, you know, in this country and across the continent. So I was like, listen, um, at the end of the day, like we like we're talking about, if you don't have money, you know, <laughs> you are literally it doesn't matter the dream and your yeah. aspirations, you're not going anywhere. And at the same time, you have people who play the sport and also able to earn money, but at the end of the day, they they are not able to manage that asset yeah. well. Yeah. So they also become victims of the sport. Mm -hmm. So why don't we rather? use it as a transformational tool so that at the end of the day they become victors of it you make a living you make yeah. a difference and you're able to still make a statement out of it wow wow you know it, it, it's such parallel stories because you hear the same thing about a lot of people who play sports in the states i used to do um work in higher education so on college and universities and i used to do career advising for athletes mm -hmm. and they did some research and they showed that when I, by the time they got to me as seniors in university, as athletes, they had the career aptitude of freshman and senior high school. Because when you get their resume or their CV, it just says basketball. Yeah. No other skills. No other skills. <laughs> right? So, so you, you, you're, you're passionate about sports. Your, your father was passionate about sports. So take us to how did the idea of Impact Youth Foundation actually start? Okay. So. Um, Fast track to 2007. Um, we actually started as Dynasty Basketball. Okay. And um, this was in 2009, um, 2008, 2009. I was coaching my alma mater school, and uh, that was more like from what had happened, my brother's experience, getting me to really start to um, educate young people about who a student athlete is, and more like basketball. So I kind of started coaching high school to kind of get them to really understand that you're a student athlete. You're not just an athlete. You know, you're there to school, yeah. but also take make sure that you're using the sport you know want to create educational and career opportunities for yourself so that's how it started so it was dynasty basketball and one time um, just doing my basketball um, stuff in my community um, a friend reached out to, to me and said oh listen I have a, a friend coming from the US who's interested in basketball he wants to see some talent I was like okay cool let me put together some of the top talents I have young top, top talents I have so I did that and it was just basically a showcase just for him to just come see but interestingly right after the the showcase was like, listen, I, who, who's that kid? Wow. I want, I can help him. I want him to get a scholarship. Wow. And then, then one kid's life was transformed. Wow. Right from just coming to just play a showcase, his life was transformed. Fast track, went to the US, high school, college, you know, and now he lives there with his family. Wow. So wow. at that point in 2008, at the beginning of 2000, 2008, 2009, I was like, man, let's really see how we can reach more people and prepare them for such opportunities. Yeah. So I started to do camps. 2009 and that was called dynasty basketball camp it was the first basketball camp that to happen in this country and we did we just started doing camps every year year in year out reaching and inspire young people to understand the whole student thing you know and also to empower them to use it as a transformation too so that's how i started okay. so then talk so, so so let's fast forward um to now yeah to impact you foundation let's talk about who actually is a part of these camps where these youth come from and let's define you know the youth right because some people exactly. may think youth is 25 which it could be depending on who exactly. you ask so let's talk a little bit more about that okay so in 2018 um, we re-established from dynasty basketball to impact youth foundation mm. and that came about as part of our our, 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 our camp programs where we took kids um, from the city to the villages to do community service mm. so it was part of our transformational uh, model wow. so in one in, in a few of our experiences i realized that it was transforming the kids from the city in terms of them really seeing you know ghana as a whole and also mm. seeing that there are other young people like them with the same passion but don't have the opportunity mm. and most of them started to be inspired to listen to, to think about what more can i do mm. and to mm. give back so from then and at the same time i saw the kids in the villages who when they, whenever they engage with these kids from the city, we're more inspired and say, listen, I can also become wow. like these kids. I can also work hard and realize opportunities like them. So I was like, wow, why don't we bring these two kids together? Why don't we bring these two groups of youth, rural, urban, underprivileged, privileged youth together? And that's where it started. And uh, when we say youth, um, the UN defines youth as um, from 15 to 25. 
but in Ghana's policy, youth policy, we <laughs> define it from 15 to 35. You know, so um, and I think it's good. Is uh, in Ga I kind of um, I kind of gear more to the Ghanaian one because yeah. one, it takes a long time for a young person yeah. here to kind of establish themselves. It's true. You know, so having extended it to that 35 is great. You know, yeah. in terms of Ghana context, but on the global context, it's from 15 to 25. Yeah. So that is, we, those are the kind of groups we work with: urban youth, rural youth, underprivileged. And, um, boys, privilege. girls, boys, girls, and actually we have more focus also on the girls because they are the underserved, you know, yeah. group within the youth um, demographics. So, um, the three words that stand out to me about your organization yeah. is right. It's inspired. Well, one of the things from your your your, your statement online that said what you're very passionate about. It's inspiring, mentoring, and empowering. Exactly. But then you talk about through integrity and faith. Exactly. So let's talk about you talk about those skills that they learn that can help them be transformational leaders for a lifetime. What are some of those skills that you're teaching through Impact Youth Foundation? So with Impact Youth Foundation is very key. We are, our pillars, you know, are around, it's two things. It's actually three things. And the three things, the first one, we have talent development. Um, the next one is character, you know, and then the third one is community building. And um, one thing which is very key and also at the same time is very lacking, you know, in, 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 our, in this side of the world and many are in actually everywhere, yeah. you know, but we see it more here as integrity. You know, integrity is one key for, for me, I believe is a one key character trait that if you have and you, and you live by, it opens doors for you, but not just that, but it also helps you to um, access, you know, opportunities. And not just that, but your name, you know, the, it, your name lives, you know, beyond you, even when you pass off here. Mm. Um, so one thing we try to do is to use the sport as a vehicle to develop and nurture these character traits in these young people because character is very key. You know, so yeah, the sport, what, what the basketball does, it inspires them, it brings the kids around, but when, when they are around having fun, we then let them see that, listen, this sport that you're playing is, is a vehicle and tool, it's not the end. So we start to expose them to character development, how playing basketball, practicing actually develops their you know hard work work ethic and that ex that starts to broaden their horizon and saying that wow listen it's not just about having fun but i can actually use this ball to impact myself and also others mm -hmm. because it's very important community building is something that we are lacking in and if we should mm -hmm. um, foster it more here trust me ghana will be a very great place or africa will be a great place community building and that's one so, thing so that what, 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 what do you mean by community for folks because we've got yeah. people watching from all around it may exactly. mean something different mm -hmm. define community building. so if i say community building what i what basically is about investing in your surroundings and investing in where you live mm. and investing in it not just with money but with your skill your knowledge mm. and your mm. time you know so when we talk about sport let's just use basketball as an example um, a kid um, and there's no such example that's actually our model a kid comes to our basketball camps um, at age five seven by the time they get to 18 they should also be coaching and helping another kid who's seven and five you know, also develop that same talent. That is community building because now they are investing back the time and the knowledge that they've learned, mm. the time and the knowledge that they've learned back into somebody else. So when we do this, and we could, this is something that is universal in the city, the same thing we do in the rural areas where we go there, we, we engage the youth and then empower them to give back within the community so that it's sustainable. It is not dependent on um, Isaac or Impact Youth being there, but Impact has just come to inspire me so that I can also impact and inspire my, uh, my, my community and the younger generation. That's wow. what we mean by coming together. All right, so Isaac, man, you have all these great programs. You're impacting like 2,000 people a year, 2,000 young adults a year. What are some of those success stories that you've heard? And, and I, I want you to give me something that yeah. maybe like on one of those days, you was like, God, I don't know why I'm doing this. But then it was one of those stories that was like, you know what, this is why. This is why I'm doing it. Yeah. So I, I'll give you two. One has to do with um, one boy, one girl. Okay. So uh, I'll start with the boy. And this is um, one kid who, who started coming to camp. And um, he started at age around 14, 15. And he came, literally picked up basketball. Um, he was playing basketball, but came to enhance his skill. But during our camps, he started to see and understand what a student ID is or who a student ID is. And uh, we, took him, um, we took him and that group to the, one of the villages where we, we call the Impact Village, where we currently run most of our community programs. And um, this, right after that camp experience where this kid came and met other kids his age, 
but were very underprivileged and had ambition to play basketball. He was inspired. He just went to coach. We, we, we engaged them to coach. And right after that point, I remember the next week, this kid who was from, a very, who was from an affluent family but called me and said, Coach, I want to go back to that village again. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, is that, I want to go back to that village again. And he literally took public transport, which he wasn't used yeah, to, yeah. but he wanted to go back to that village to do exactly what he had, what he wow. had done with us, but this time on his own. And that really inspired me. And he traveled from Tema all the way to Dodoa, which hey. is like, which is like, which is like um, two hour journey. Yeah. And he went there and replicated exactly what we did with them, with, with them. And the great thing is that right after that, this kid who was, this kid went on to play college basketball in the US. And he wasn't tall. He was just six three. And just, he, just six three. Was, was, yeah, six three in terms of. I mean, for, 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 for NBA. For NBA, yes, and especially. Six three is like, hey man, what's up? Exactly, what and and coming from Ghana, and he went to a D one school. Hey. You know, so for and he went there. One of the things that he kept telling me was that coach. One of the things that was on, on my CV that really got me this opportunity was the community service that we did. Wow. And wow. and for me, at that point, I was like, yes, this is why we're doing what we're doing. You know. So that, that's one of the impact stories. The other impact, impact sport stories that for me inspires me a lot is um, one girl in this village where we went, the same village I'm talking about, Anyanya, um, and uh, unfortunately she got pregnant when she was in grade five and uh, she dropped out of school. So she stopped um, engaging more with her friends because she saw herself more like a, a teenage mother and she stopped playing sport. But during our camps, she started to come around and um, through now, through our camps, now we've gotten her back to school. She's about to complete middle school. Wow. We've, um, through the camps now, she could have easily gotten pregnant again. Mm -hmm. But now through basketball, she now sees that, listen, I wanna play basketball, I really enjoy doing this basketball thing. So now there's more reason for her to stay away from all of these things. But now she's more equipped and empowered to say no. And also she's given back by also training and coaching the other girls in her wow. community not to not to make that same mistake wow. you know and now she's so those kind of stories makes me see that listen when we say this this ball you know is a tool and a vehicle mm -hmm. it's true you know and it all depends on how you use it you know and what you use it for you can just use it for entertainment but you can also use it for to transform lives and that is what we've chosen that's what i've chosen to do with this ball wow so just a couple more things before we yeah. finish somebody watching this um may be really inspired and they've been looking for an opportunity to partner with an organization like yours. Um, what are some of you guys' needs and how could someone watching this partner with you guys? Um, definitely, we, you know, needs are always insatiable. Like we have so many needs and um, support that we need. Um, we, we have a program which we are just about to start called Impact Investors. And uh, that is a part where we are open to philanthropists, we are open to um, corporate bodies who want to invest in impacting lives and communities. And that is where uh, we're looking at people coming in to support in terms of funding and putting up uh, facilities, in terms of equipment, uh, also in terms of um, supporting and funding our workshops and our camps. Because one thing, one thing that for us is very important is that we want to make sports affordable and accessible. You know, and one of the things that we need is that it has to also be funded in a certain way to make it affordable and accessible. So um, having that support or service delivery, you know, we can have people who can come in to say, listen, uh, we can help you guys with T-shirts, you know, um, for the kids. You know, we can help you guys, you know, in terms of when you want to put up a, a workshop, you know, we can help you um, in terms of um, equipment, you know. And so we have different areas of need from funding, to equipment, also in terms of service delivery into transportation, because we're moving around to different regions, you know, and when we're going to these places, sometimes it's costly, you know, so having people to also support even in terms of that. And, you know, recently, one of the things that we also been very passionate about is also helping young people to also explore the country. Yeah. So we also want to be able to get young people from different parts and let them, like, let's go to Cape Coast to go and yeah. play basketball, but also do some community service. Let's take some kids from Cape Coast to go to the Northern region. You know, and that's some of the things that we want to do. Because one thing is that it starts from home, you know, and now I know the Beyond Return and some of these great um, organizations are trying to push, you know, yeah. for people to explore and experience the beauty of our country. And yeah. it's about time to also let our young people, yeah. you know, start to explore that right now. And those are some of the ways that we are looking at uh, people coming aboard because there's so much that corporate bodies, individuals, philanthropists can gain from this kind of 
um, program, you know, and when they invest their time and invest their resources, trust me, the impact is great. And somebody also watching this, maybe right here in Ghana or maybe outside, and they've had a heart of like, I, you know, I just actually received an email the other day. Somebody sent me and said, hey, Ghana has been on my heart. I want to go back and do something, but I don't know where to start. How would you encourage that person that has a vision to help their country, but they just don't know where to start? What would you tell that person? I'll, I'll, first of all, one thing that the good book says, the Bible says, that it's nothing new under the sun. You know, so whatever you want to do, somebody has done it before, somebody's doing it. I would say that find, you know, someone who's doing it, you know, engage with them and, you know, and serve, you know, kind of just go in and affiliate yourself in it as a starting point to learn, you know, because there's nothing new under the sun. Whatever idea you want to do, somebody's doing it or somebody has thought about doing it or done it before. So reach out there, explore, find who's doing it, communicate with them, engage with them, go and serve with them, you know, and then use that as a platform to also build yours. That's wow. all I'll say. Wow. Well, listen, Isaac, I, I am so grateful for this time today. I'm so grateful for the work that you're doing here in Ghana, and I'm sure you, know, you and your team are doing. So, Isaac, thank you so much for uh, being with me today. I appreciate your time, and thank you for the work uh, that you're doing here in Ghana. It really is impactful. And thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. I sincerely appreciate it. I know you love this content, so make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Till next time, peace.